This is Vince Russo's The Brand. What's going on, everyone? It is I, the Kingpin, King of the Streets, Suntan Superman, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Tragedy, case number 77. Before we get started, man, I just wanted to say, hey, it's October. I'm excited. It's the Halloween season, my favorite time of year. Pierce is always rocking his uh, Halloween outfit all year round. So, you know, oh. um, but, you know, I want you to let your fans know. The, you know, since it's October, I want to do a couple uh, episodes, you know, some mysterious and some strange tragedies and stuff. So be prepared for something new and exciting uh, during the month of October. But today we're going to talk about two good friends of mine that I shared the ring with, um, but Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney. We're going to call this episode the Chair Swinging Freaks uh, case number 77. I think that's appropriate, don't you think? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, you know me, Angel, I'm a huge, huge fan of, of the hardcore wrestling style and, and even the deathmatch wrestling style, which they both uh, partook in to a certain extent and, you know, were pioneers of that style uh, in that early 2000s, late 90s um, time frame. And, you know, two guys that were, you know, really underrated as, you know, professional wrestlers. Uh, and I think that people just put them in that category of those hardcore style guys where I think that a lot of their, their styles, like you look at Axel, who amazing promo, amazing That's promo, uh, and, and, but it can also work. I agree. No. I agree. But before we get started, let's get these sponsors out the way. You know, like you said, I'm uh, sorry. I get excited. I get excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no worries, man. You know, so let's get that sleeves up. So I could definitely, uh, cause I don't do the health vape one, <laughs> but sleeves.com definitely check sleeves, sleeves.com definitely for your athletic wear. It's a great company. If you're on the gridiron, on the baseball field, on the rugby field, soccer field, you know, even lacrosse, they have everything that you need for your sports accessories. Um, definitely you have headbands, arm sleeves, and also my favorite thing, the dirty boxers. Go to sleeves.com, use promo code MWA pod for 10% off and uh, tell them the wrestling with tragedy people send you kingpin approved. You're on mute, brother. Next up, we have help healthfape.com. <laughs> I apologize how, how uh, unprofessional of me, but healthfape.com is your healthy vaping alternative, ladies and gentlemen. All of their products are no nicotine, no addictive, harmful, or you know, nasty chemicals. They're energy infused, they're vitamin infused. You can get some of their vape and pod products by going to healthfape.com and use promo code MWA pod to get a 10 percent discount on your final purchase guys if you're looking to give up cigarettes you're looking to give up the regular vape you know i'm i'm one of those guys that walk around with a vape and chuck fucking clouds up in the sky i need to get off that shit all my friends my loved ones my wife are telling me so health vape is my road to getting off that to doing nothing so guys if you want to go to a healthier lifestyle check out healthvape.com. you will not be disappointed Absolutely, man. Well, anyway, today, the Chad Swinging Freaks, case number 77. You know, first of all, I want to talk about, like, basically, these were two good friends of mine that I shared the, the, the square circle ring, in the square circle with, <laughs> in the ring. But, um, you know, I hate talking, I don't hate talking about my friends because I don't, I feel like I'm exploiting them in, in, in my brain, but it's, it's a sure. show of awareness of the tragedies that, even though they were good guys, they, sh you know, we had laughs and stuff. Everybody has a dark history. I have a dark history. Axel has his dark history. Balls has a lot of us have dark histories. It's just how we overcome those pains and over how we get past that and continue moving on in our life. Some people can do it. Some people can't. Those demons came and haunted my two friends. And at the end of the day, it took their lives. So, um, you know, it's going to be a touchy subject, but again, it needs to be addressed before future wrestlers, tag teams that won't follow the same path that my friends did. You know, don't you agree? I, I, I definitely do agree, man. And, you know, as I said, these were guys that they, they put their bodies on their line for a majority of their careers. They were in some very hellacious matches. Uh, even as a kid watching some of the, the chair shots that I saw, you know, balls take, and and seeing that like you know what i mean like it's it's one of those things that's like it's so you know i remember seeing it and being taken back a little bit and being like what the f like wow like this guy just took a clobbering uh 
you know, and also was giving just as good as he got, but still like it all, I always thought it was like, what could be the long-term effects of that? You know what I mean? Like I thought that like there's got to be long-term injury involved with taking that style of punishment. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the, the chairs that he's given and the chairs he received, it, they were just explosive. I mean, um, Tanaka, you know, Masao Tanaka, you know, I mean, you see it on TV and hear that how the chair just explodes. I mean, I, um, even in WWE, when Rich Stevie Richards cracked Bradshaw, you could hear how the he just echoed in the arena and everybody yeah, just yeah, gasp, yeah. you know. I mean, of course, that was a receipt, absolutely. But but still, it's just, um, like I said, I've been rattled. You know, do I have any type of brain CTE concussion gimmick in my – I don't know until I die and then they do those tests, which I don't want them to do. But – um but it's scary, man, because like I said, we put our bodies on the line. We, you know, again, I trusted those guys and they never tend to hurt me. They just wanted to give the fans the most exciting, hardcore match. And we, and I was willing to take those shots, you know, and same as they were, you yeah. know, but, but, you know, not to sidetrack, you know, um, you know, let's just talk about the first person, Axel Rotten, Brian Knighton, Knighton. You know, I keep butchering his name. I always did, you know, but um, that was his real gimmick name, you know, uh, born April 12th, um, no, April 21st of 1971. He would have been 50. Yeah, he would have been 50 years old, you know, now. Um, this guy was, I mean, a legend. I mean, he learned from a guy named Ricky Lawless in Baltimore. Uh, he told me mm -hmm. one time. And um, the thing about Axel, man, I mean, his promos were so genuine. Just like New Jack, man. It's just like, it was believable. Like when he talked to those that camera, he sucked you in. Like he was just talking to you personally, like Jack. Like he was talking to you as an individual face to face what he was gonna do in that ring. And it made you more engaged in in the in the match because if you like kind of like not took it personal, but like you had stake in it, you know, yeah. and it it was just so interesting. Like that's not something you learn. Some people are just talented in that aspect of like cutting promos. And I just think he was just a born natural person speaking on the mic. Like I said, Jack was. I don't think Balls was. I mean, I'm not knocking his promo skills. It's just that when you hear them, Bo Axel, it was just like, wow, man. It was just like a speech that just grasped you, like the Gettysburg Address, like Abraham Lincoln. Just you know, he just held the audience at the mm. from the bootstraps. You know, he he kind of reminds me of like that generation, like your generation's wrestlers and of like <clears throat> you know and i'm gonna put names out there like a harley race a you know dusty roads of the way that they were able to captivate an audience without being the you know the typical bodybuilder type pro wrestler <clears throat> you know what i mean like the body whereas they were that sort of rough guys that you would see in a bar that look could legitimately kick your fucking ass in the street. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think that for me, I always got that like traditional old school feel when I looked at guys like that. You know what I mean? And I put Mick Foley in that same category, you know, of performer where it's like, you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily think that they're going to be, you know what I mean? Like the star of the show, but, they can go out there and put on an amazing performance and steal the show. But, you know what I mean? They don't have that body that, you know, you would think of it for a pro wrestler, if that makes sense. Yeah, man. I remember uh, I totally forgot he was in WCW. We were just talking about that a couple, like two days ago. And I'm like, oh, I forgot he was in WCW as uh, Axel Rotten. And um, he was heavier. He he looked like Brian Knobs because he had this, yeah. like, gimmick haircut where he shaved the back of his neck but left the hair long at the base. Yeah. And then, of course, he had a little hair at the top, and he was heavier. And uh, I don't know, it just reminded me of Brian Knobs. Um, but uh, it's just interesting. The guy just traveled, and he wrestled a lot um, for, you know, for different organizations, which I didn't realize how much road, road time he had. I know he had, but it's just when you see something like that, like, oh, wow, he was in WCW. I didn't realize that. You know, I admired him, you know. But the one thing about Axel and Balls too, but Axel stood out the most. No matter how hard he hit me with the chair, seriously, whatever match we had, he hit me. With, I got my room, uh, clock rang. As soon as the, sh the match was over, and I used to walk back the back in, behind the curtain, the, he was he always waited. You know, he always waited behind the curtain, and and he'll stand there, of course, with the chair in his hand, bent up, bent up, and he'll. 
And I'll look at you and go, hey, hey brother, you okay? And I'll hold you by the back. He could touch you and be like, hey, you all right, brother? And he, and he go, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good, good. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. And he, and he gives you a hug and he goes, yo, thank you. You know? And that meant a lot because it acknowledges that he appreciated you putting your body on the line for him. Because if it wasn't for whoever he hit, you know, he, I'm giving my body to make him elevate actual, elevate Axel Rotten. So, you know, he always was appreciative of what you did for him. And like I said, it was always awesome to like open the curtain. As soon as you go inside the locker room from, from, the, from the arena, that's the first person you saw. Well, of course, Balls was there, but I'm just bringing him up first. And he'll say thank you. And same thing with Balls, you know. He'll say, hey, brother, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, you all right? And he'll hug you too. But again, Axel was the first person I always saw when I walked through the curtain. And, it, you know, I appreciate that, that he was he cared enough about if I was okay. Is that more of like an old school tradition thing to do, like in wrestling? Like to have, like to always make sure you appreciate the people that put you over kind of thing? <sighs> the thing is, is that it just depends. Like in ECW, we were family and we still are. Um, I got nothing for love. I can't, I don't have no ill will for nobody in the locker room. That's the weirdest thing. Like, you know, like you go, I can't stand that motherfucker. I mean, there's some guys, you know, this motherfucker, you know, like for example, when we made fun of Johnny Swinger, this motherfucker tried to kayfabe me telling me he's not on the gas. <laughs> he's full of shit. You know, I don't yeah. do gimmicks. Don't work me, bitch. You know, but it's not that I'm like mad. <laughs> I'm just like, don't, you know, we're family. Don't lie to me. You know, I mean, I'm not yeah, going to stooge yeah. you out of nothing. Don't well, lie to gonna... your big brother. I know what you're doing. Yeah, kind yeah, of. yeah. So in ECW, we cared about each other. And we, we don't want each other to get hurt. No matter how injured we were, we, you know, that's that's the thing about, how, how about us, you know. Like I said, I joke around about Steve Carino and all the stories about, but I love Steve Carino because he's ECW. He's family. Yeah, we have our little headbutts and stuff. I mean, we're not the click. We didn't hang like the click. You know, there was clicks yeah, in the yeah, locker yeah, room. Yeah. I hung out with DeVito, Danny Doran, you know, like stuff like that. But um, there was groups. But uh, but we're still family. I would do anything for Steve Carino, but I'll bitch him out, you know. <laughs> but um, but he's – once you're in ECW, you know, like the NWO for life, you know, family. Yeah. You know, and I, my eyes – when I see my friends, you know, like t tomorrow, I'm going to go to that, uh, um, repro um, wrestling event uh, around here. And, uh, uh, Ronnie Max going to be there Sam, and my eyes like light up when I see him, you yeah. oh. know, and I hug him brother and it's a big hug. And, you know, it's a family, man. We happy to see each other and we just never miss a beat when we hang out and talk no matter how many years pass. But anyway, again, what's sidelining? Hundred um, percent. We, we it, it's what happens in this show, man. Like especially when we're uh, talking about uh, you know two people that you're very that were you were close with uh, that you shared a locker room with for for many years. Um, but you know, I wanted to talk about you know like we're talking about Axel and and, and Balls Mahoney, the chair swinging freaks, and you know one thing I wanted to uh, that I noticed like I listened to a lot of interviews from. Um, Axel Rotten. Axel Rotten was kind of like for me was like I was a big fan because like I don't know for some reason his character resonated with me. But I listened to interviews of his and it's like when he speaks, he was so articulate, he was so well spoken. It's almost like you know when they say don't judge a book by its cover. That's the kind of thing because if you look at Axel, you go, man, this guy is like one rough big motherfucker. Yeah, you know, you'd expect him, Argh. but when he speaks, he was just so well spoken, so well. Almost like he just came, he articulated himself very well. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I got some videos and uh, uh, that's one thing I, want, I need to know, uh, to ask you. If we do decide to put up videos with me and since WWE owns it, I, I don't know if we can show it or not, but since I'm in it, doesn't... Nah, I, I don't know. We'd probably have to do research on that. I mean, it yeah. is me. I mean, it is me. I, I have a right to it. But I anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just that yeah. there were certain promos that he was in there talking about the Baldies. And you could see the, you know, how it, you know, elevated the, the group, both of us. Anyway, uh, we'll look into it. If, if we'll add it in here just to show you example. But if not, we, we WWE stopped us or whatever. But anyway, um, you know, anyway, keep going. What were you saying? So, you know, with Axel, like he was one of those people that was really articulate. 
that I found, and it's like I said, you don't, you can't. It's really the the epitome of don't book, uh, ju- judge a book by its cover. Um, but as far yeah. as it was, like you know, how was he to deal with? Like you know, backstage, you said he was very welcoming and stuff. Like uh, when you'd walk through the curtain, but you know, Axel as a, as a performer to work with and to plan things out with, was he always welcoming with your ideas or was he more of like, okay, guys, this is how we're going to do things. Take that general role. Once you earn your stripes in ECW. Um, yeah, absolutely. And he was still not mean. I mean, it's not like he was like, yo, we'll do, you know, okay. The mass transit incident using that as an example, you don't come in a new green guy and just start chipping your teeth and saying, this is what I'm going to do. You say, hundred percent. Hey, what do you want to do? And that's when they offer like, hey, so what do you want to, you know, after they tell them what they want to do, then they say, well, do you have any ideas? You mm-hmm. know, then you ch- put your two cents and say, well, is it okay if I do this? You know, oh no, how about this? You know, like they always do that. So when I first got to ECW, of course I was still ring crew and learning myself. So yeah, I did what I was told, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and I say, hey, uh, can I ask a question? Is it okay if, if I add this in there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, Tommy Rogers was good like that. Uh, you know, it's Mike, uh, my Mikey. Um, uh, oh my God, um, Spike Dudley. You know, was always willing to like say, yeah. Well, what do you want to do? You know. So, but again, I said, is it okay? Or can yeah, I, I have an idea. Is, is it okay if I bring it up? You know. As time went on and the Baldies were forming and stuff like that, then Axel was so, and Balls or whoever were like. Mm-hmm. You, you know, they say something, I say, well, hey, I got an idea. You know, now my tone is different, not rude. But then you, they tell, they say that idea and I go, hey, man, I got an idea. What do you think of this? See how my tone is different? I say, hey, uh, I have a question. Is, is it okay if we could do this? Or, hey, I got a good idea. What do you think of this? Because now I'm getting, you know, they're here and as little by little, I'm getting You're that. Earning, res- earning your stripes and the respect. Earning my respect. Yeah, yeah. Earning my respect. So that's the thing. So Axel was always and balls. I mean, and it's how you approach them. That's the thing. Balls, yeah. balls. Okay, like good story. When Vito's like, I remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> We're going over our match, and um, it's the one where Vito got hit with the chair by balls. You know, Axel hit him in the back, and Vito stepped forward and got the chair shot. And yeah, it expl- yep. exploded in the back of the locker room. I'm, it's God honest truth. Vito told Balls, you know, um, hey, you know, you know, just take it easy with the chair shot. And um, and whatever was mentioned, talked about at the time. And then Vito walks away and literally he broke the fourth wall. He looked, <laughs> he looked at me, he goes like I'm turning away from the camera. But it, if I was like this, he's talking to him like this and he goes. Did he really say what he just said to me? And I looked up and I'm like, and he goes, he, he doesn't know. I don't. I, I know how to work. You know, like I'm not gonna hurt him. Fuck that. You know, like fuck that shit. You know, and, <laughs> and he fucking <laughs> shit. And then all of a sudden he fucking ran to the fucking ring truck, got these black zip ties. You know, the real industrial strength zip ties, and just fucking zip tied the fucking chair. He put like two on one, two on one side, two on the yeah. other side, and he's like. All right, you know, like he fucking reinforced it, and I'm Jeez. just, like, and I'm just like, oh fuck, man, because Balls was the type of guy that you had to approach him in a in a tactful way that you didn't offend him because he, his brain, he was, the, you know, the you know, cat. We used to call him Captain Caveman, you know, the yeah, Neanderthal. Yeah, yeah. So, he, oh, oh, what do you mean by that? You know, that's how he was. What, what the fuck, man? What do you mean by that? You know, his I hate sounding like yeah. he was stupid, but it, you, no, you, no, no. You had to approach him in a tactful way that is like, you know, that he, he won't take offense to it. There's there's a certain way how to deal with people. And the but that was the came. same way with New Jack, right? Correct. Jack was always Jack was Jack was the type of guy where you meant you say something and then two hours, three hours later, he go, What the fuck you mean by that? You know, like, but he didn't do it with everybody. He didn't like Vic Grimes. Again, we were family, but again, that Vic Grimes story is it's it's a fucking enigma, you know, it's a rarity that that uh, that our family, you know, had some type of a destruction thing in it. But anyway, we're, again, we're going off track. But uh, but with balls, so that's what happened. So you know, Vito got destroyed, you know, because of the chair shot. And then Vito to this day is like that motherfucker put zip tie to the chair, and I'm like, and um, me, I was very tactful. I was very tactful. 
regardless if I knew how they were, I would still respect. Never, you know, it's just the way you approach everybody. And I was like, hey, Axel, can we do this? You know, if it's not cool, then don't worry about it. And he was, nah, man, we could do it. It's cool. You know, that's how yeah. I always did with everybody. You know, yeah. But that's why, like, there's probably not many places that you go to where you've got heat with anybody either, Angel. Because, like, besides Dutch. <laughs> besides dirty dutch besides dirty dutch yeah we, we, should really, get him, we should get him on an episode we can discuss <laughs> it'll be a fucking argument section that's all it will be just a huge argument session yeah. but like i said i don't have heat with nobody as far as i know um i treat everybody with respect um i mean i speak my mind now i mean in regards to their talent but anyway but um but you know what did you think about that when axel joined the ecw 93 and became part of the the bad uh, bad breed group with uh, Ian Wright and and Axel Wright. What did you think of that tag team when they were formed? So, so dude, um, you know, as I've told you many times, like I, I used to rent some uh, VH ECW VHS tapes from our local video store. And uh, for the fans out there, VHS tapes were, were <laughs> DVDs for the for that era. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that were the DVDs Good of sense. the nineties. <laughs> but uh, and I saw matches with the bad breed of them wrestling together but for me the i i saw i think the the first time i saw them was actually the split of the bad breed so oh. when they had had the split yeah. like i saw them from that that end because it's like i got sporadic tapes like they were just all over the place so and i was watching it years later so once the internet came in i was able to go back and re-watch a lot of this stuff but like seeing those guys work like i was seeing a style of wrestling that i had never seen before that i'd only seen photos of in magazines and you know, like these guys were having like a barbed wire baseball bat match, you know, well, and like just bleeding all over the place and just lighting each other up. Oh, well, yeah. When they split up, I mean, they innovated the Taipei death match. I mean, this is when they, it took it to the next level of, and again, I can't even fan of anything before that hardcore matches that were, you know, the, you know, the shit like, you know, like what, you know, the, the, the pizza cutter and, you know, the yeah. fluorescent light bulbs. I don't know if that was able that kicked off, you know the the you know the death matches. You know, I mean, I'm, I think it, I think it did because they, or put they, it on the map. Are, I, I think they are death matches. Th those matches are like you you even put like for example, uh, in ECW the no rope barbed wire matches with Terry Funk and Sabu, or even the no rope barbed wire with the Sandman and Cactus Jack, or. You know what I mean? Those were death matches. They were just called think, something else back then. But do you think? Of course, I can't. I can't remember. Maybe it's the CTE in me. But prior to that, if death matches were in existence before the Taipei death match, before the Terry Funk match, and the Sam, you know, before they were in existence, but ECW put those, you know, like elevated it to now. People are like, holy shit! And then they started looking for death matches and looking for other things, and and now it just like elevated it because now it started. I I think it brought. I think it brought. I think it brought eyes on into it from a United States and a Western country level. Um, I know Japan was doing death matches for years and years, and even in Puerto Rico, man, you look at stuff like with Abdullah the Butcher and like uh, Bruiser Brody. Like, dude, those matches and stuff where they were bleeding all over the place and shit like that, man. And, yeah, true. You know, but like, I just don't he, think. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I no, was just gonna say I don't think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, the Bruiser Brothers, the Abdullah, the Bush. But I think it just didn't give it enough. I mean, people were watching it, but it still didn't give enough eyes on it. I mean, it was popular, mm -hmm. but but uh, to me, to me personally, I think at a certain time when Axel did the Taipei Deathmatch and did Sabu cut his, you know, all that stuff was just kind of just rose it up to a different level. And that's when oh, people yeah. were like, holy shit, wow, let, let me look some, for some more shit. And that's when he started going either from the back in the days, like, oh, I didn't know this was you know, Abdullah the Butcher, and then they started watching more of it, and then it elevated the death matches to, to the level it is today. Again, my uh, opinion, people might say no. I'm just saying that's that what I think. I, I think so as well, and I think even through the times when ECW folded and companies started coming through doing that CCW. sort of style. CCW and that started, and XPW started coming through doing that sort of style. They had to raise it to another level. You know what I mean? Oh. Like... You know what I mean? Like, even Tommy Dreamer, he was at a CZW show, and at the end of it, he goes, man, you guys, what you guys do here fucking blows the ECW out of the fucking water. He goes, like, this is like, fuck, you guys are nuts. 
But, oh, yeah. You know, getting I mean, back into to, to, to what we were saying about Axel and, and the Taipei Deathmatch, like, I remember watching that and thinking, like, like yo, and like, you, like I was like probably thirteen years old watching that, or t- probably a little bit younger, maybe twelve or eleven, maybe. But like watching that and sort of like going, "Hang on, is this pro wrestling? Like, what, 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 what's this glass? What the? Yeah, you know I mean, but it, I was sitting there watching and wanting to know more. And the psychology that they told in that ring, and the match that they had, like Axel, like I said, is a good worker. Ian, he's. I never worked him, so I can't even uh, talk about yeah, him. Ian, he's a good deathmatch worker. You know what I mean? Like he, 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 he made a name for himself like that. You know, I don't have anything negative to say about him. He's neither here nor there. But I think that that feud that he and Axel had was synonymous, and I think that it really sort of, I think it helped elevate ECW at that time. What made made it more intriguing to me is when you saw the preparation for the Taipei Deathmatch. When they were, you know, just like that movie, uh, Kickboxer, they were crushing yeah. the glass, crushing the glass really fine. I mean, I remember seeing that. I don't know what the fuck I was seeing. Either it was part of the the, the video, and they fucking did the glue, whatever fucking glue they used, and they literally dipped it in that motherfucker and really caked it. Because if you see, because you, I remember who the fuck was doing like licking their hands, and you could see the blood on their, you know, on their Axel. tongue. I don't can't remember. It's been a while, but yeah, you know, and you can see the glistening of the fucking glass all over that. I mean, it was like the way they did it was a fucking art form. It was like a trailer to 100%. to to the to the movie. You know, people were just like, "Oh my god, it's it's happening." You know, and I think that's what just grasped everybody, and that's what I mean. That's why I kept oh, you know, it's funny. I used to look at actual scars on his arm. I mean, he fucking damaged his fucking tattoos for the business, and you can see the fucking gashes and the fucking keloid tattoos on his fucking arm over his tattoo the, you know and he bitched about it i mean there was a documentary he's like look i fucking put my body through all this shit you know um but that was my choice and look at look at my arms and shit and you know it was just fucking interesting man you know yeah dude but uh you know like shortly after that uh you know that feud ian left ecw and uh you know left and then axel went on uh from there um but one of the things i found out about axel was uh when i was doing my research for this that uh when he grew up he grew up in in a in a split household like his parents Mm -hmm. were divorced uh and he and he was grew up in an abusive environment like violently abusive where his like mom would beat him like chain him to like radiators and shit like that um and i'm talking he was like less than 10 years old and in this thing he was saying is like when he was 10 he actually told his father and he said he was scared to tell his father because his father was like a hard ass kind of guy and like you know what i mean like kind of thought that his dad would just tell him to suck it up and his Mm -hmm. dad basically said you know why don't you tell me sooner and you know blah 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 but the mother the abuser in, in this situation said to him you know if you tell your father then you'll never see your father again you know what i mean like you know like people who have that power over someone and can sort of hold that threat that's kind of what she did and you know obviously he you know he he spoke to his father but you know he actually attributes that abuse to his um you know a drug abuse that he did because he said he, he goes for the longest time he was trying to escape that pain trying to forget those memories and you know that's why dipping in on you know the the gimmicks as you want to call him, Angel, uh, that he did try and escape that mentality. And I think that you see that in a lot of abuse victims as well, correct? Yeah, I mean, and I'm going to be honest, I never really knew about Axel's personal life. We never really got involved in our, you know, uh, once you uh, once you leave the arena, yeah, again, we were family, but we just never revealed too much about, about our own personal lives outside sure. uh, ECW. So I never knew about his, uh, you know, abuse and um the issues that he had and stuff, like I said, but he was always humble. He was always a, a wonderful guy. I just didn't know that he had demons. I mean, I've seen things, you know, um, you know, I mean, drugs, drugs were known in ECW. I never done them. I mean, I did my pills and stuff like that, but, um, but I was not very heavily into it. I just did them once sure. in a while when I was hurt, but, and I seen shit cocaine. I seen, I seen, you know, shit that I don't want to mention here because I don't want to put people on blast. Of but course. I mean, I know Axel did his shit on the side. I just never really seen things, 
visually that he did, but I know he had um, some issues, man. Like I remember when I saw him at the uh, extreme reunion and he had bell palsy and really? uh, yeah, his face was um, fucked up. And I asked him, like, dude, what happened, man? You know, I mean, it just shocked me. And he goes, Oh, I had a case of bell's palsy and bell's palsy, man. It just, uh, yeah, uh, it just like makes your face drop. It's a, it's a disability. You just like, you could, it's you see, almost like similar to like a stroke victims. Yeah. It's uh, like a stroke. Yeah. It's a, they say it's more of a, uh, it's a, it's a mental thing. I think it was, it's more of a, it's a lot of stress causes mm -hmm. bell palsy, um, or bell's palsy. I'm sorry if I'm butchering up the name. Um, cause somebody might correct me. Um, it, it, you know, your eye, you know, you can't close your eye. Cause I had a friend who told me like, cause I didn't know, the, I know it, but I just didn't know how deep he said that when he had it, um, no, she had it that you could, couldn't even close your eye that she had to literally put tape on it to sleep Fuck. because it, it, you know, it, you know, it just paralyzes your side of the face. And it, so you, even you'd be drooling, you know, and you have to put a napkin and stuff Fuck. and so yeah, but that, so when, but it's it's temporary though, right? Like Bell's palsy, or is it like it once be, you got it, you got it. Yeah, it's temporary, but again, it's case by case basis. Because again, my friend who told me like there's people who it stays there permanently, you know. It's but it's stress. It's a lot of stress, and um, that again, I'm not a doctor. That's what they told. She told me that it's just called it's caused from stress. Maybe other factors as well. But again, um, it's scary when you get that. But um. I remember seeing him, and and that was the night he crashed his car. I remember when he uh, that night when he left, he went off the road and crashed. So Fuck. I don't know if he was on gimmicks or whatever, but I remember they were like, "Yo, Axel fucking crashed, flipped his car over. He's in the fucking hospital." So um, I remember that day. So, but again, man, great guy. We sat together, laughed, joked around, you know, um, you know, and uh, you know, seeing him in, in that state, you know, it's just, it breaks my heart, you know, you know, like balls, man, balls look like 90 years old. We mean, uh, Stevie, we used to look at him. Go, what the fuck? We used to look at each other. Like, Do we look that fucking bad? And he goes, nah, man, <laughs> you know, he goes, nah, brother, you know, I mean, and I'm not making fun, but dude, the guy is, I'm older than balls by a year mm -hmm. and the gimmicks that he took. And I seen shit. And again, I'd be like, balls, you're going to fucking kill yourself, man. Fuck it. You know, and I'm like, you know, and, um, you know, I mean, it, it it was just a fucking, like I said, I know balls, you know, um, we're going to go with balls now, you know, just to talk about him a little bit, because we're talking about the chair swinging freaks. But, you know, I know John, I mean, he started wrestling when he was 15. He went to high school with Bill Wiles and wrestled against, and he was good friends with Chris Candido when they were young. I mean, they knew each other from the gate, from fucking junior high school times. And um, they and I remember Bill Wilde showing me a fucking photo of them wrestling in high school, you know, on the fucking collegiate. I mean, Balls was a fucking collegiate wrestler, and he was a good fucking wrestler. And Bill's Bill Bill was too, you know, even though I give him shit. But yo, they had their shit together in the and stuff. And um, and and Balls was just uh, I knew him since Larry Sharp. You know, when I first started in the business, I remember going to Larry Sharp School for something. I forgot what we went there for. And uh, I met Balls. I met D'Lo before he was D'Lo Brown. I don't know what his gimmick name was, but he was there. Um, I think Balls was known as – fuck, I forgot the gimmick. That's the one when he burned uh, Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, I, I want to say it was, it was like an Arabian gimmick because I remember he used to wear fucking these big old Sabu-looking pants. And, Cajonis? Um, no. Oh, uh Abuda Dean or Ab Abuda Dean, yeah. Abuda and he fucking Singh? yeah, yeah, so shit like that. And he shaved his head and he had this little gimmick, uh, uh fucking Harry Krishna gimmick on the back of it. And uh yeah, perfect timing for Angel just to cut out there. But uh, you know, guys, we are covering the episode case number zero 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 seventy-seven, the chair swinging freaks. I'm gonna take this time to thank some of our sponsors uh that help this uh, episode air every single these episodes air every single week. Uh ladies and gentlemen, we have healthvape.com. That's right, that is your healthy vaping alternative use promo code mwa pod for a 10 percent discount guys you get all your healthy vaping stuff their stuff is no addictive or harmful chemicals no nicotine 
and they are vitamin infused. So if you're a cigarette smoker, you're a vapor, you're one of these people that walk around with one of these guys, you need to get yourself onto healthvape.com. Use promo code MWAPOD to get a 10% discount on your final purchase. But guys, I can't forget about sleefs.com. That's S L E E F S. Dot com. Use promo code MWAPOD for a 10% discount on your final purchase. Guys, if you're an athlete or someone you know is an athlete, you need to go to sleeves.com. Use that promo code. They've got headbands. They've got knee guards. They've got uh, armbands, compressions, pants, compression, socks, compression, shorts, compression, uh, everything, basically. They've also got dirty boxes, guys. So, I have to say they sent me a bunch of these dirty boxes and they are the most comfortable boxes that I own, guys. So do yourself a favor. Go to sleeves.com, check out some dirty boxes. And uh, like I said, use that promo code MWAPOD to get a 10% discount off your final purchase. And uh, guys, we'll definitely be there. But, you know, we are covering uh, an episode of the Chair Swinging Freaks, Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney. And as we're talking about these, these are friends of angels that he has known for, you know, quite a period of time where, you know, these guys uh, are friends of his, you know, he wanted to talk about this story to, you know, this goes to any young wrestlers out there that, uh, you know, putting their bodies at risk to, he wants them to be able to know and understand that there are going to be consequences. Both of these guys uh, had CTE damage um, and it, and it's quite sad because they kept, you know, he hurt his, you know, these guys had this damage done to them from these matches and from doing these bumps, you know, and these, these guys knew what they were doing. These were performers that went in there and they understood their role of what they needed to do to be that part of the show. But, you know, I think in this day and age, you know, young performers need to understand they don't need to go out there and put that on the line every single week. They don't need to go out there and take beatings like these two did because, Ladies and gentlemen, like, you know, those chair shots that they, they took, you know, I mean, yes, it's professional wrestling. Yes, they are protected to a certain degree, but they're still being hit in the head. That's why you've seen certain protocols come into professional wrestling where you're seeing, you know, no head shots. Um, you know, same with like, you know, concussions, you know, WWE has taken concussions very, very seriously where guys have been sort of taken off the road. Careers have been ended, uh, quickly because of, you know, people that have suffered from CTE. That's why this episode is so important. So as I said, uh, uh, you know, a second ago, if you're a young performer in the business watching this, this is the reason, you know, why Angel wanted to cover this to show a tribute to his friends, but also so young guys can understand that taking this sort of punishment with chair shots, you know, can lead to some serious CTE damage and, and to try and avoid taking this sort of damage uh, in the ring, if you will. Angel, welcome back. Yeah, man, something happened with my, and it wasn't even my internet. My other monitor crashed. Uh, something's going on with my computer. I'm not going to touch it until we're done with the show. Uh, you know, but anyway, sorry about that, fans. You know, you know that's how it is when you go, uh, you know, when you're doing these shows, it's just little technical difficulties. But anyway, where were we at? So I was just saying that the reason why we wanted to do the show, you know, these guys were both, you know, friends of yours, Angel. You know, you shared a locker room with them for many years. But also the fact that, you know, the style that these guys wrestled in was very intense. It was very, you know, aggressive and, and took a lot of uh, toll on their bodies as well, as you were you were saying. And this is something that some, you know, young performers that are thinking that they want to make their name for themselves in this sort of style, taking this sort of punishment, they should really have a good hard look at, you know, the careers of these two because, you know, uh, you know they do both died at a very young age. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, it, it, it's shocking how, you know, it broke my heart when I heard about Axel. I mean, he, he his life was really, he was he had a lot of demons, balls too. Um, but the way it ended, it was just, um, it's hard to say, like, it's sad to say when you go, well, I'm not surprised. You know, that's the thing when you're people go, well, I wasn't surprised, you know. But um, like when New Jack died, one of my friends said, well, I mean, he lived a hard life, man. What did you expect mm -hmm. anything less? You know, but when you build a close relationship with these guys, 
and um, they become your friends and you start seeing your friends dropping off like flies and you're like, you know, even though me and DeVito joke around like, you're next, bitch, you're next, you know, I mean, because just to keep it humorous. But, you know, when you have 10 people in the room and you notice, and, you know, like everybody's dying off one by one, you know, and you, there's 10, there's nine, there's, you know, six. You're like, oh, shit, you know, it's not, you know, it's like being old when you have no more friends and all your friends pass away. Your brothers die, you know, your sisters die yeah. and you're the last one, last of the Mohicans. You're like, what am I living for? I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to me, but you know what I mean? Like when you're old, yeah, yeah. you start thinking like, man, everybody's gone and I got no friends. Everybody's, you know, what I'm going to do. So it's kind of the same thing when you start seeing your friends pass away. It just hurts your heart because, you know, that locker room was so close. And then, you know, there's not too many, too many of us still. I mean, there's a lot of us still, but still, it's just the numbers are dwindling little by little. It just, it bothers you, you know. I can imagine. And, yeah, I I, I want to make it clear as well. These these gentlemen didn't die from CTE, but it was shown in their autopsies that both had CTE um, on their brains. And you have to think that that could have also been contributing factors to, adi- ad, you know what I mean? Like additional things like substance abuse and stuff like that. And, you know, mentality that drives you, you know what I mean? Because you don't know, like, you know, by taking the substance abuse and the drugs, it was like, you know, masking pain. You know what I mean? Like how much pain were these guys in on a daily basis? Yeah. That's one thing. I, I mean, I remember, I think, uh, you know, Axel and balls did get, tested for cte but again don't quote me i need to look that up but um but uh i think it was axel i heard that they did a test and he his brain was you know had those type of uh uh whatever they call those signs of cte yeah but again um like i said i might have it you know vito might have it uh devito might have it i mean devito took a lot of shots harder hits than i have um you know that's the scary thing. You do not know until after the fact. And that's the scary. Fucking scary, man. I like it. Well, fuck. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I mean, and that's the thing. I'm not, so, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't know about rugby, but, you know, like I said, those fuckers don't, I mean, you wear those fucking, those, those, those jock straps on your head. And, and I mean, and I don't even know. Head guards. How, yeah. But how, I mean, those shits don't, I mean, they just, they protect you, but you're like, fuck. <laughs> you know, that still looks like, I don't think that's enough protection, especially when you fucking go head to head. I think that still fucks your nugget up. You know, uh, dude, I play rugby for ten plus years, man. Yeah, and that, I mean, I, I don't, I don't like rugby. I'm not saying I don't like it. I just don't know the sport, but I admire them because those fuckers are just. I'm like, I'm like, I can't do it. I mean, wrestling the same thing. I mean, I can do it. It's just because one of my friends wanted me to play rugby with these Samoan dudes right behind my house, and there's a rugby team. <laughs> And um, and then when I see them crack each other and it's free, that's the thing. I, I can't justify when you're like, I can't do this for free. I have to get paid to get, you know, so that's why I don't, I won't do it because I'm like, it's like judo. But I you're a 50 year old man as well, bro. You should be going but, and playing rugby. No, but even if I was, even if I was younger, the way my wrestling mind works is that remember red is green. Yeah. yeah, And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and anytime I put my body on the line, I have to justify it with the dollar sign. 100%. So, when I, so if I was playing rug, I can't play rugby for free, not because I don't want to. I just don't see no fucking value in it in money wise. Now, if I was a fucking player in high school and I did it for fun in high school and and it became yeah. a career and I got a scholarship and then uh, opportunity arises. Story. Yeah, the opportunity arises for me to make money. Then I go, yeah, I'll fucking get my face busted open, lose a couple of teeth just for fucking the, the, the fucking dollar sign. But um, but again, I, like, not to go off track, but like I said, just like rugby, uh, how many motherfuckers on that fucking, uh, I don't know if you call it the gridiron or whatever you fucking call it. Have the rugby CTE, field. Yeah, you know, CTE from fucking all the times they fucking go head first into motherfuckers, you know? 100%, dude. But uh, Angel, we're getting to that time, man. You know, we, yeah. we, we really, I feel like we've just started to get into the the. Oh, the this is just part one. This. this is just yeah, part one. Yeah, absolutely, man. There's, there's so much. We have to really do a part two to really show respect to these two guys. And, you know, I think... Let's do a part two, and with part two, let's dig a little bit deeper into their lives and and, and also them as a team, and you know, go over a, a couple more, uh, you know, details about their their struggles, uh, you know, with abuse. But I think as well, maybe even just talk about some funny experiences that you had with them and, and show some oh, respect fuck. for these guys as well, man. How, There's how nothing you feel but about respect. That, absolutely, absolutely. So let's just you know do part two next week, um, and uh, you know. Um, 
definitely talk about them and and the, the good, the bad, the ugly, and uh, you know we definitely uh, will do that. But let, let's get these sponsors off, and then uh, we can uh, do part two. Get out of here. We'll definitely check out talking about rugby. If you're in, the, you know, on the rugby field, I call it the gridiron. I know you say rugby field, the gridiron. You know, on the on the field, and you want some sports athletic wear to definitely uh pump, you know, step your game up. Go to sleeps.com. They have all the accessories you need to protect you. Um, and um, I love it. You know, I, but again, I love the dirty boxes. I think that's my meat and potatoes of that website. So go to sleeps.com. Use promo code MWA Pod. It's definitely you know worth it to go over there and check them out. Um, tell them a wrestling with tragedy sent you, and it's also kingpin approved. Hell yeah. And also check out healthvape.com, your healthy vaping alternative, ladies and gentlemen. All of their products are no nicotine, no addictive or harmful chemicals, and they have vitamin infused. So go and check out some of their vape and pod products. Use promo code MWA pod to get a 10% discount on your final purchase. Absolutely, brother. I mean, hey, I'm excited. I'm happy that we did this segment. Definitely, oh, everybody, yeah. check us out on. Uh, oh, this is a, is going to be 78, or is still going to go off of 77? That'll be 78. 78. Okay, so let's do uh, the case number 78, Tear Swimming Freaks Part Two. Man, yo, don't miss it. You're going to love it. Also, sign up for the Rus- You know, go to the Russo's uh, Russo's Brand.com. Remember, my CTE is kicking in, so if I'm messing up, catch the ball. But um, definitely check them out. I mean, if you want this fresh out the gate. Go to, go to roostersbrand.com, sign up, man. You're definitely not going to regret it. But if you can wait, then you definitely check us out on YouTube. So, well, And um, all your podcast platforms as well. Absolutely, baby. absolutely. We're just trying to keep this short because we're out of time. We love you guys greatly. Thank you for uh, supporting us. You know, like, subscribe, share, and peace out. This is Vince Russo's The Brain.